It happened here on a gray storm-swept beach near Florence, Oregon, a place where the tides and shifting sands hide many secrets, but not all of them. <laughs> After all these years, it's amazing that this thing has come back to life again. But every once in a while, it pops up. It's an aroma that still lingers. It was one of the worst smells I've ever encountered. Words cannot describe the smell. It was in my nostrils for a solid week. And for television news reporter Paul Lindman, it's the story that will not go away, one through which he will remain 24 years old forever. It had to be said, the Oregon State Highway Division not only had a whale of a problem on its hands, it had a stinking whale of a problem. I'm a little tired of the whale. Okay. <laughs> In November 1970, a 45-foot-long sperm whale died at sea and washed ashore on that very same beach near Florence. For more than a week, the eight tons of carcass remained there, rotting, while the locals tried to figure out what to do with it. They did face just one minor problem at the time. You see, it had been so long since a whale washed ashore in these parts that nobody could remember how to get rid of one. It was too big to bury. It stunk too much to cut into little pieces, and burning it was out of the question. So, in its ultimate wisdom, the Oregon Department of Highways, which had jurisdiction over this beach, decided to blow the thing up to use dynamite. It seemed to be the best idea at the time, at least to Highway Department engineer George Thornton. As he told Lindman on that fateful day, dynamite had solved plenty of problems in the past, and he had a strategy. Well, I'm confident that it'll work. The only thing is we're not sure just exactly how much uh, explosives it'll take to disintegrate this thing so the scavengers, seagulls and crabs and whatnot can clean it up. Thornton settled on 20 cases just to be on the safe side. His crews dug holes, placing the dynamite to blow the whale bits out to sea. As they went about their business, more than 100 people turned out to watch. Oh, yeah. Um, there were picnics. Uh, there were entire families. This is going to be fun. Let's, let's go see the whale. Only one man expressed concern. I'm thinking we got big trouble here. 20 cases of dynamite. Walter Umenhofer had come upon the scene by accident. He'd been looking for property that day, but since he'd worked with dynamite and sand in the military, Umenhofer warned Thornton, who didn't take him very seriously. This guy says, anyhow, he says, I'm going to have everybody up there on the top of those dunes far away. And I says, yeah, and I'm going to be the furthest SOB down that way. According to most accounts, NASA has launched rockets with less fanfare. They made a big spectacle of, of, of waving their hats, their hard hats in the air, and we clear everybody away and all this, all clear. The flag drops, the thing goes off. And they touched that sucker off, and let me tell you, that thing went up and it was the biggest mushroom cloud you've ever seen, and it was red and white and black, and it was nothing but guts and blood and gunk. Carried by a wind, the cloud moved inland. So everybody all of a sudden start realizing that, oh my God, here it comes in this mist. We were covered, we were permeated with redness and the smell. That would be the least of their problems. Those who witnessed the explosion agree that the next few moments seemed to last forever. Individual descriptions vary, but it soon became apparent that what should have been little pieces of whale turned out to be big ones. And this stuff starts hitting the ground. Boom, 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 boom. And all of a sudden you realize, my God, I could be killed by whale blubber here. And I'm watching this one piece. There's a big piece up there. And it's kind of flubbering and floating around. And we ran. We literally ran. And it just absolutely stopped. And it came flat down. And kapow. Right on top of Walter Omenhofer's 1969 Oldsmobile. It was a neat car. I just got it from Dunham's, and it was a Regency. And, and like I say, the funny thing about their 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 slogan is it was a whale of a deal. Well, I got a hell of a whale of a deal. <laughs> Within two days, the state of Oregon wrote Walter Umenhofer a check for the full retail value of his car. Public Affairs. This is Ed. Hello. 
25 years later, a description of the whale event found its way onto the internet. Some of the readers get angry, and then they call Ed Shopes at Oregon's Department of Transportation. They think it just happened. But despite all attempts by those involved, curiosity about the exploding whale remains as overwhelming as the carcass. 25 years later, Paul Lindman still works at Channel 2 in Portland, along with Doug Brazil, the photographer who filmed the original event. It's just uh, one thing after another here. Every few days, they get another request to see the footage. Uh, we have the Jeopardy show is interested. And everybody who contacts me says the same thing. I need to see that video, the Atomic Energy Commission. We work, of course, with explosive devices. We need this for training purposes. What do they really want? They just want to see the whale blown up. Finally, you may be wondering whatever happened to the man who underestimated the strength of whale blubber, George Thornton. Is there any chance it might be more than a one-day job? Uh, if there's any large chunks left. Well, he declined to be interviewed for this story, but in his official written report back in 1970, he declared the operation a success, more or less, which helps to explain what happened to his career six months later. He got promoted. From Florence, Oregon, Wayne Friedman, Channel 7 News.